Yes, folks, that's all we need sometimes is a miracle, especially in motorsports. And I'm going to show you one area where if you do not understand some basic principles here, you definitely going to need a miracle. Video number six, pop it by off ceiling specifications. I'm going to give you a little quick thousand foot overview of uh, specking out valve ceiling interfaces. All right, so let's get started here. First item, valve and seat contact angles. Okay, when you have a poppet valve, opens, close, opens, close, the poppet valve must rest on a seat, and that seat, it must seal tightly against that seat. And the normal accepted industrial numbers are Intake valves get a 30 degree interference, 30 degree angle between the seat and the ceiling area of the valve, and the exhaust get a 45 degree angle. Now, 50 some odd years ago, when I was in school and this was explained to me and given to me as a fact, they're without any explanation. Well, why is this one 45? Why is this one 30? Um, wasn't in the book. I sort of suspect it has to do with the flow. Because with the uh, intake, the flow is this way, and with the exhaust, the flow is that way. And here on my little drawing representation, I've actually split a valve drawing, and on this side, I'm showing the exhaust, and this side, I'm showing the intake. So this is what this means here. Okay? So, first thing, intake 30 degrees here, exhaust 45. Secondly, second big item is ceiling bandwidth ratio. And what that means is that you have this ceiling area on the valve and the contact area between the seat, which must be machine cut, ground, lapped into place, should be, the ratio should be on the intake side at least one third up to one half the width of this band that's been machined into the valve. On the exhaust side, the preferred is one half this width of the band for the contact area. Why? Because you got a lot more heat over here, so the more contact area you have, the greater heat path for heat flow to get heat out of this bloody hot exhaust valve. Just that simple. Now, the third item in the specification is the edges of the valve must be thick radius edges cannot come down to a point. If they come down to a point from excessive remachining and resurfacing of the valve and you get a point, what's that point going to do when all that blast furnace heat hits? It's going to blow red hot. Bam! Just like that. Nice heavy massive rolled edge. Takes a while to heat it up. Okay, and it's much tougher. Okay, so we got bandwidth, we got a thick edge ratio. The next thing on this contact area between the valve face and the seat face, surface finish. And this is greatly overlooked in motorsports. And on subsequent videos where I walk you through actually doing a valve job, we'll talk about the different grits that we grind and lap into these because we have to have a surface finish high enough so that as this opens and closes, it seats and seals every single time. Not seal this time, not seal it that time, what good does that do? It just makes a mess. All right, so surface finish is specified for your information, young engineers, in something called RA numbers. That's roughness average. And their units are in micro inches. Micro inches is one over one million. And to give you some sort of context here, 150 foot, uh, <laughs> 150 grit sandpaper, which you'd use on wood or something like that, has a RA of about 30 to 35. And uh, 240, which on woodwork would be getting in toward the fine, is 15 to 20. And 400, which would be getting into fine on metal, is 4 to 10 RA. So you have to know that spec. Tons of information on this online. This is just to let you know what you should be looking for. Now, what are we looking for in getting a proper seal? Where our target is airtight. 
we want these valves, both of them, to open and shut, and when they shut, they are airtight. If they're not airtight, it's bad on the intake over here. It's horrible over here on the exhaust. Why? Because if there's leakage here, guess what? You get that blast furnace air going through there, and it'll actually cut a trench after a while. Ooh, so this one will go from bad to worse rather quickly. Okay, so there you go. One, two, three, four items and with our target being airtight. Okay, one last thing in going. I'm going to give you something as a designer in the future. Or as a, if you're reverse engineering an engine, what to look for. The most critical thing, if you had to select a, if you selected a valve to go in an engine and you selected a seat to mate with it properly is the inside diameter of the seat. This turns out to be the throat area in the ports and this inside edge because it's running parallel to the center line of the valve is going to point to where the contact area is here. Now, you can machine it away, machine it away, and the contact area will grow in this direction. It will not grow in that direction. And that's the key. You've got to match up the inside diameter of the seat to the valve face area. So if you want a 25% from the edge to here, then that edge has to come down and hit this ceiling area at the 25% mark across that distance. I know because I just had to do that on my Marini racing engine a couple of years back when we oversized the exhaust valves. So that's a real important little step to know. Put that in your pocket for use on down the road. Okay, go do your projects and next video is going to be the basic steps in a valve job. Ta-da!